In this video, I will be introducing some central ideas in the field of thermochemistry that we will use throughout this module. Our objectives are to define key vocabulary, including system, surroundings, internal energy, heat, and work. We'll also discuss how to determine the direction and sign of heat and work for the system and surroundings. Energy is a central idea to all scientific fields, including the field of chemistry. Transfer of energy plays a central role in both chemical and physical changes. Energy is formally defined as the capacity to do work. This may seem like an abstract idea, but let's consider the energy associated with riding a bike. When the bike rider pushes down on the pedals, that's converting chemical energy in the bike rider's muscles into mechanical energy. This propels the bike forward. The bike riding analogy illustrates a key idea, and this key idea is that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It's merely transferred in any chemical or physical process. As I alluded to, there are different ways to classify energy, not just chemical and mechanical. Here I'm showing the main classifications that we'll discuss in this course, but there are many others as well. Kinetic energy is the energy associated with motion. Thermal energy is a form of kinetic energy that's associated with temperature. Potential energy is that which is stored due to position and composition. You can think about this as stored energy until that energy gets converted to kinetic energy. Chemical energy is a form of potential energy associated with the composition and position of specific subatomic particles making up a particular sample of matter. There are multiple different units used to report energy, the SI unit being the joule. The joule is a compound unit, which is a kilogram times meter squared per second squared. Other common units include the calorie, lowercase cal, the kilocalorie, uppercase C-A-L, or K-Cal, and the kilowatt hour. The con uh, this table here shows the conversion factors between each of these units and joules. Interestingly, nutrition labels in the U.S. report energy stored in food as kilocalories. So when you look at a nutrition label, the calories are actually kilocalories. This concept will be discussed more in a future video. This table shows some different reference values to give you an idea of the energy required for certain processes in the value, various units of energy. Generally speaking, the amount of calories burned after exercising is reported in calories, whereas the average amount of energy that is required to keep a light bulb lit in your house is reported in kilowatt hours. Again, this table allows for comparison amongst the various energy units. When considering energy transfer, it's critical to d specify what we call the system, which is the specific process or, invest or, or environment that we're investigating. The system, in the case of uh, most chemical reactions, is defined as the collection of atoms or molecules that are undergoing that chemical or physical change. For example, we may be interested in a reaction that occurs in a metal crucible shown in this picture on the left. We can define the system as the mixture of the chemicals inside the crucible that are reacting. This would mean the surroundings would be everything else, including the crucible and everything outside of the crucible. In this example with the flask, we could define the system as the solution within the flask, and the surroundings would be everything else. Going back to the idea of the conservation of energy, what's meant by that is that internal energy is conserved. Internal energy is the sum of the kinetic and potential energies, and typically represented using an uppercase E or an uppercase U. E will be used for the remainder of our discussion on thermochemistry in this class. Importantly, the internal energy depends on only on the state of the system. Therefore, internal energy is defined or referred to as a state function. 
We can further define the change in internal energy as the final internal energy minus the initial internal energy. For a specific uh, case involving a chemical reaction, the final energy is the internal energy associated with the products and the initial is the internal energy associated with the reactants. It's important to consider both the energy change associated with the system as well as the surroundings. We'll explore this with two scenarios. So consider a case where the internal energy of the products is greater than that of the reactants. What you'll observe is that the change in energy of the system is positive and the internal energy change of the surroundings is negative. This means that energy is um, being transferred from the surroundings to the system. If we consider a case where the products have a lower internal energy than the reactants, we'll observe that the change in internal energy of the system is negative, whereas the change in internal energy of the surroundings is positive. This means that energy is being transferred from the system to the surroundings. By establishing the system as a common reference point, this allows us to investigate changes in energy from the perspective of the system. At this point, it will be helpful to define the change in the internal energy as the sum of heat and work. Heat is defined as a flow of energy between the system and its surroundings caused by a temperature difference. Work is defined as the action of a force through a distance. Our goal here is to establish the meaning of the signs of heat, work, and internal energy which we will build upon in a later video in this module. All of the signs that I'm going to show you in the table below are set based on what occurs in the system. Let's look. Heat has a positive sign when the system gains thermal energy from the surroundings, while it has a negative sign when the system loses thermal energy to its surroundings. Work has a positive sign when done on the system by the surroundings, while it has a negative sign when done by the system on the surroundings. The sign of the change in internal energy will depend on contributions from both heat and work. If a system has a positive sign for the change in internal energy, it means that energy is transferred to the system by the surroundings. If the system has a negative sign for internal energy change, it means the energy is transferred out of the system to the surroundings. These uh, were discussed on the previous slide. Our objectives here were to identify and define system and surroundings. We also discussed heat, work, and internal energy, including determining the direction and sign for heat and work based on what we define as a system and surroundings. We'll be definitely building on these concepts in the next videos, so look forward to seeing you there.